Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about conductors and insulators. These are materials which allow the flow of electricity and do not allow the flow of electricity respectively. It turns out that not all conductors are metals. So we'll be looking at some of the more interesting sorts of conductors. Now, in materials uh, like metals, the charge carriers, which are electrons in the case of metals, are free to move around quite easily. Right? So we have charge carriers that are easy to move that can very easily transmit electric charge and electric current. If we apply even a small voltage, even something in the region of, you know, a thousandth of a millivolt, then the electrons will quite happily move across and produce an electric current. Right? Because they're free to move. So we call a material like this a conductor. In a conductor, we have plenty of charge carriers that we can move around even with low voltages. Other materials uh, might have very few charge carriers, or they might have charge carriers that are locked in place. An example of a material like this is a block of wood. If we apply a very large voltage, then we won't get any charge carriers moving, and we won't get any current flowing. We call a material like this an insulator. You can see that when you connect an insulator in circuit, you won't get the light bulb lighting up. Uh, now, if the voltage across a conductor is small enough, then we won't really be able to notice the current very well. And on the opposite hand, if we have a voltage across an insulator that's extremely high, then we might be able to cause current to flow which is why lightning is able to strike trees. Uh, so current flowing through a tree uh, will occur when lightning strikes it, even though the tree is made of wood, which is an insulator. Makes sense, right? So if we have an extremely small current, we might not notice that something is a conductor. And if we have an extremely high voltage, we might not notice that something is a resistor. Now in general, metals make better conductors than other materials. So the best sort of conductor is metal, whether that's you know iron or copper or aluminium or mercury. Graphite, uh, which is a little like charcoal, is an example of a non-metal conductor. Can you remember what graphite is made out of? It's made out of carbon. And salts and strong acids can also make good conductors, as long as they're dissolved in water. So graphite and salts and strong acids are all examples of things that are conductive, even though they are not made out of metal. Now, when we have salty water or acid water conducting electricity, it's important to remember that the, con the conductivity of the liquid is due to the dissolved salts or the, the dissolved strong acids. Pure water is not very conductive at all although it's not uh, as good an insulator as some other materials. Now to conduct electricity, a material has to have charge carriers that can move, right? Otherwise it can't have an electric current flowing through it. The outer electrons of metal atoms are free to move through the metal, right? We learned uh, before that the electrons are moving about at random, even if there's no current flowing through the metal. So the electrons are able to carry charge around the metal very easily, and metals make good conductors, right? The electrons of an insulator, on the other hand, are bound tightly to their parent atoms. They really, really don't want to move. So unless you apply an extremely high voltage, they're not going to. So they are not free to move and cannot carry charge around the material. And this means that insulators can't conduct an electric current, right? Now, let's look at some conductive liquids. Pure liquids consist of uh, neutral molecules with tightly bound electrons, right? And initially, this makes it seem like they're not very good conductors of electricity, except, of course, for mercury, which is a metal. But when a salt or an acid dissolves in water, the salt or the acid will separate into ions. 
if we dissolve uh, sodium chloride, table salt, in water, it'll separate into sodium ions and chloride ions. If we choose an atom instead, one of the ions will be a set of hydrogen ions, and the other ion will be specific to the acid that we're using. So an ion is simply an atom, or a set of atoms, that has an electric charge. Right? In the case of table salt, the sodium ion has a positive charge, and the chloride ion has a negative charge. This means that if we take salt as a whole, equal parts sodium and chloride, it's negatively neutral. So the solute, that is the thing that we dissolve, separates into positive ions and negative ions, assuming that it was uncharged in the first place. So both types of ion are freely able to move through the water, right? And this means that they can act as charge carriers. We can see in this photograph over here that we have a container filled with blue liquid that is conducting electricity. So both types of ion, the positive ions and the negative ions, are able to carry charge through the liquid and allow the solution, that is the dissolved stuff in water, to conduct electricity. Right? Let's look at gases next. Now, gases are made out of neutral molecules, much like liquids. And unlike liquids, there is no such thing as a gaseous metal, at least at room temperature. Anyway, the neutral molecules are insulators because they don't have electric charge, right? But when gases are heated to extremely high temperatures, that is the thousands of degrees Celsius, or if they're subjected to a very strong electric field, thousands of volts, then they will ionize. So knowing what ions mean, what do you suppose ionizing is? Well, it means the gas molecules and their electrons are separated, right? So instead of being neutral gas molecules, they become charged gas molecules, that is ions, and electrons. They've been driven away by either the high electric field or the heat. Now, if we have ionized gas, we have another name for it. We often call it plasma. Now, in a plasma, both the electrons and the positively charged gas ions are free to move, right? Gas is able to move across pretty freely. So if we remove the electrons from them, it won't change their behavior much, but it will mean that the ions are now charged. The electrons, of course, are free to do as they please once they're free from their atoms. So because the uh, positively charged ions and the negatively charged electrons are free to move around, uh, both of them can act as charge carriers, which means that a plasma is able to conduct electricity. And this is, in fact, what lightning bolts are made out of. So, that's the end of the theory. We've learned about some of the various different types of material that can conduct electric charge. Let's go on to some questions. Question 12. Which of these materials is an insulator? Water, lead, sulfuric acid solution, or graphite? So, uh, water is of course a type of molecule. Lead is a type of metal. Sulfuric acid solution is a dissolved acid. And graphite is a carbon compound. So, because lead is a metal, it's a good conductor. The electrons in a piece of lead are free to move around. If we have a sulfuric acid solution, then we have dissolved positively charged hydrogen ions and dissolved negatively charged sulfate ions. Because both of these ions are free to move around, sulfuric acid uh, solution will conduct electricity. Graphite is made of carbon, which at first might seem suspicious because it's a non-metal. But graphite is one of the few materials that doesn't contain metals, but still conducts electricity in its solid form. Uh, graphite, the carbon compound, is also used to make the lead in lead pencils. The last option then is water. So this must be the correct answer. Pure water does not have any free charges to act as charge carriers, so it is an insulator. 
technically it is very weakly conductive. It does have a few hydrogen and hydroxide ions. It's sort of like water being dissolved in water. But out of all these, it's certainly the least conductive, and so it's the most like an insulator. Question 13. Which of these materials is a conductor? Well, easy, right? Pick the metal. Uh, oh, there aren't any metals here. We have sodium chloride crystals, iron oxide, which is a metal compound, dissolved sugar, and ionized nitrogen gas. So let's go through our options. Sodium chloride crystals at first looks uh, like an alright choice, but remember that sodium chloride and any other salt will only conduct electricity if it's dissolved or if the ions are free to move. If we have crystals, then the salt is in a solid form, which means that the ions are locked in place. Salts can only conduct electricity if they're in the form of a liquid, whether that's dissolved in water or if the crystals themselves are heated up hot enough to melt. B says iron oxide, which also looks promising because it contains iron, right? Well, I'm afraid that's not good enough for a conductor. Iron oxide is not a metal, it is an ionic substance called rust. Uh, the electrons of the iron are tightly bound by the oxides, and that means that they are not free to move through the compound. So iron oxide, though it contains a metal, also contains a non-metal, and this prevents the electrons from moving around freely. Dissolved sugar looks a little promising as well. We know that dissolved salt conducts electricity. But the thing about the dissolved sugar is that it doesn't separate into positive and negative ions, because sugar is of course not the same thing as salt. So even though it's dissolved, it stays neutral, which means that the water doesn't become any more conductive. The last option then is ionized nitrogen gas. But hang on, I thought gas couldn't be a conductor. Well, if we ionize it, uh, we can stop calling it ionized gas and start calling it plasma, if we like. So D is the correct answer. If we have a plasma, in this case nitrogen plasma, then the electrons of the nitrogen molecules are stripped away by the intense heat or the intense electric field. That means that we have positively charged nitrogen ions and negatively charged electrons, both of which are free to move. And this means that the nitrogen plasma can conduct electricity. Question 14. Name an insulator and describe how it can be transformed into a conductor. Now it might be tempting to write down something like a block of wood, but it's not very easy to make a block of wood conduct electricity. So what we need to do is think of perhaps a conductor to start with that's not metal, and then figure out how to change it into something that is not a conductor. Right? So in the previous question, we looked at a few things that looked kind of like conductors but weren't. If we can find a way to transform those into conductors, then that's our answer here. So we might say something like a gas. Now a gas is an insulator, but if it's ionized by making it very, very hot or putting a very strong electric field across it, it will become a conductor. So there's an example, gas, of an insulator and an example of how it can be transformed into a conductor by making it very hot. But that's not the only example that you could have used. If we have a crystal of salt in its solid form, then all of the ions are locked in place and so the crystal is an insulator. But if we dissolve it, or if we heat it up so that it melts, then these ions are free to move around. And this means that dissolved salts, or molten salts, are conductors of electricity. Question 15. Most conductors are made of metal. Give three examples of conductors that are not metallic. Now think back. Can you remember any? Well, we have graphite, which is a carbon substance that is able to conduct electricity. We have sodium chloride solution, or indeed any solution of salt dissolved in water, because this will separate into positive and negative ions. 
If we wanted, we could also dissolve an acid. So we might have nitric acid solution or sulfuric acid solution. Uh, one final answer might be something like ionized neon gas, that is neon plasma. If we heat up a gas so that it's uh, very, very hot or has a very, very high electric field across it, then the electrons of the gas will separate uh, from the atoms. And in fact, the neon, normally made of atoms, will become neon plasma, which is made out of ions and electrons. Plasma tends to glow, and in fact, neon plasma is what's used to make neon signs. Question 16. Can electrical current flow through insulators? Justify your answer. Now, the yes or no to the first part of this question will be only one mark out of the two or three that this question might be worth. So in order to get full marks, we need to justify our answer as well. So what shall we answer, yes or no? Well, let's look at the extreme case. If we pass an extremely high voltage across an insulator, like a block of wood or a tree, then can we cause current to flow? Well, yes, in fact, we can. If lightning strikes a tree, that tree is going to conduct electricity, whether the insulator that it consists of likes it or not. So insulators have a very, very high electrical resistance. That means if we put even a very high voltage across them, there'll be almost no current flowing. But a very large electromotive force, a voltage, can still cause a current to flow across the insulator by forcefully ripping the atoms and their electrons apart. So a very large current, such as the current carried by a bolt of lightning, will be able to carry through the insulator such as the tree, even though it has an extremely high resistance. So there's the justification for our answer. So that's the end of the questions. In this section, we've looked at various conducting and insulating materials, even some conducting materials that are not metallic.